Today is chimney repair day. We've got uh, three masonry chimneys uh, to do coming up and uh, we've got a wood frame and um, wood siding chimney coming up that we're going to be doing. So we're going to try to capture all four of these chimney repairs. I've done a lot of this chimney work um, mostly because uh, as owner of Austin Roofing Contractors back a few years ago we found that it was impossible <laughs> really very difficult almost impossible to hire somebody to come and do a chimney repair for you and get it right they maybe knew a little bit about masonry unfortunately most good masons are busy doing bigger work and um, you know, that, that really is the nemesis of this industry, this business of doing residential, is trying to get good guys to do the work that know what they're doing. So I, a couple of weeks ago, I placed uh, a number of ads multiple times, and it generated over 70 uh, inquiries. And of course, I didn't take them by phone call. I had them contact me by email and or uh, texting so I could track and see who was who. and. Out of that, um, I narrowed it down to only two that I would consider working with. One's probably not gonna be the one because he has too many middlemen and it's gonna drive the cost up. The other one is a mason and owns the company himself. He has a person work for him to do the selling, estimating, and so on and so forth. A good combination in my opinion. And I went out to meet him, looked at a lot of his work, and I think he's a good match. Unfortunately, timing was an issue. We need to get some of these chimneys done. Uh, he is gonna be hopefully working in before we get the last one done, the masonry in a week or two. So here's the real bottom line is, a lot of them thought they knew how to do chimneys, but I would ask them for actual pictures of the work. Oh my God. <laughs> One guy sent me pictures and I said, you only, I, sent, I texted him back, you only sent the before shots. Where's your finish shots? He texted back, that was the finish shots. All he did was put caulking and liquid sealer on top of chimneys that were totally, totally gone. They'd been leaking for a long time. You could tell by the amount of caulk buildup around the chimney. In fact, is let's take a look at a couple of those pictures here. And so what I found out is a lot of people wanted to do chimney work, again, 70 people, because they're up on the roof and they can get away with anything. Just put pookie on it, just whatever, and give you a spiel that they've done a whole lot of chimneys. But the chimneys that we typically get to are chimneys that have been worked on and worked on and worked on and the homeowners have paid money and money and money for almost nothing of any value work. So what we're gonna be doing today is um, doing this chimney. We're only gonna be able to get the cap done today. We'll have to come back uh, tomorrow. Actually, it's Friday, so we'll be back on Monday if it's not raining to do the flashing around the bottom and all the tuck pointing on the chimney itself. And it's really, really, really important that people understand that that's the most exposed area on your house. It's the most exposed area of any masonry because almost all other masonry is covered by a roof line. And so you never really get to know how well your masonry was done for the most part. Hopefully you never do because if, if you do, it's probably because you've got rotted walls somewhere in the house. But a leaking chimney, and this has been leaking uh, new owner they discovered that it is leaking. They knew that there was probably some problems with it. Uh, and they asked us to come out before they ever bought the house. And we gave them a full report that this would be, need to be done. And then shortly after they moved in, the leaks began. So that tells you it was leaking when they bought the house, even though the owner said that they had everything repaired. Having it repaired by a person who doesn't know what they're doing is like not having it repaired at all. It's gonna be a great day though. Yesterday it snowed here in Austin, Texas. The roof had an inch of snow on it early in the morning. Today it's already warming up. I'm down to my shirt sleeves. It's a little cool feeling, probably 48 degrees, something like that. Later today it's going to be nearly 70 degrees. Typical Austin. I love working in Austin. So we're going to go up on top of the roof. The first step is to get prepared. We're not removing too many of the tile today because of the rain coming in, but we're moving enough that we don't damage any and that we can fasten some scaffold boards down so we have a walkway to work on the chimney cap. Good access is critical to be able to get a good cap 
done well, and you want to protect any roofing that's going to get anything on it, uh, whether that's putting down some sort of a drop cloth uh, that won't slide, uh, plastic taped to the roof, whatever it's going to be. If you put plastic on a, on a roof, keep in mind it gets real, real slick. So you want to do the protective of the roof, realizing that what we're doing is from the roof tiles and the roof underlayment up. That's where the problems are around the flashing and of course at the top with the top cracked all the pieces. We're going to show you why those cracked and what we do to prevent cracking on the work that we do on chimney caps or the crown of the chimney. Okay, so as usual, um, it's been patched and poked at. Patched and poked at gets you more grief because you spend money and now you got to spend money again. And as always, around the flue liner, no one protects this with a um, expansion joint and that's a real mistake because it always cracks from the corner out, the corner out, the corner out, the corner out, out. Every time that people try to do it without it using an insulator around there, uh, this is always happening. And I'm not sure why people don't understand. I'm not sure they don't understand. I'm not sure they, if they understand or if they just don't care because it's way up here and they get away with it. What a shame. All right, so we're gonna cut this JP and I would cut them in about eight inch sections because they're as heavy as can be. And then we cut them straight into this way, eight inch sections this way. We can get these off of the roof without um, a lot of grief. Um, what we find in Central Texas is, um, in this situation, it looks like what they did on the original cap, which I'm a little confused on what's what here. It looks like the original cap was across here, and you can see this was this was the curve of the original cap. It probably is all down in there. Uh, and then what they did is they put a board in to go across, and then they put a sheet of drywall on top of that to pour the concrete on top of and of course you know wood and um, moisture don't go well together uh, it expands and contracts helping to create some of the cracking going on you really want a slab across here that is self-supporting and one inch or five-eighths of an inch like you see here just not does not cut it now granted they were using the old uh, masonry cement was the original one which never 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 last uh, but you see most of them like that and you know there's going to be masons argue that but uh, typically when you have a leak on a roof they don't call them masons they call uh, roofing contractors or chimney repair people or something and so they never get to see the mistakes it's kind of a shame so what we're going to try to do is get this off the best we can without losing any of it down in that hole and that's always the big challenge at this point all right, we oh got. Oh my God! It goes all the way down. We got a Jerry. serious crack. I bet this. Well, it's hard to say. It looks Jerry, like look the last that. people that worked on it. It looks like the last people that worked on it put this on here, uh -huh. and that's just masonry. Masonry is has very little strength. Masonry is made to give, so the stones don't break. And uh, you know, masonry to use it as a, um, you know, a supporting factor around the outside of a flue doesn't really work. Now you can use it between the flues because it gives that expansion that it needs. But look what it's done to the flue. Uh, somebody's gotten this thing pretty hot at some time, would be my guess. I'm not sure that's what caused this, but I'm also thinking that whoever did this chimney knew it was cracked because this one's not cracked. Um, and they went ahead and did it anyway. These need to be replaced and I cannot tell. I don't how know if it's running all the way down, but up to that part right there. I know two large ones right There's, no this one's complete look it runs on the side of the of the putty there yeah so it's running about maybe five and a half feet yeah. down okay so those flue liners are no good anymore when you're doing chimney work you got to be prepared you may have to get in the chimney to do the work now we've got to get this other flue out of here uh, because it's cracked all the way down you don't want to leave that in there that could actually crack on the other side fall in while you have a fire and it's inevitably when it would do it because that's when it's going to get hot and expand.